Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture series on OCI file storage service and in this particular module we are going to introduce the file storage service and look at it, some of its characteristics. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So we have been using this uh, slide to show you the range of storage services available on uh, OCI starting with local storage, block storage, file storage, and object storage. These have different storage architectures. In this particular module, we are going to look into file storage service. File storage service uh, works on a storage architecture in where uh, you manage data uh, as a file hierarchy. This is in contrast to object storage, which where the, uh, the storage architecture uh, we manage data as objects uh, and also in contrast to block storage where we manage data as blocks within sectors and tracks within physical disk drives. Uh, so that's the, the main high, high level overview difference between file storage where you manage uh, data as a file hierarchy versus block storage where you manage data as fixed size blocks or versus object storage where you manage data as objects. And then we'll look into some of the uh, details in subsequent slides. So what are the use cases for the file storage service? There are several use cases, uh, some of uh, which are related to Oracle uh, applications like EBS, uh, which, uh, which uh, needs uh, and uh, works on, on file storage requirements. Then you have general purpose file systems. Uh, there are scenarios on big data analytics, HPC scale out apps, uh, and, and several other uh, scenarios where uh, file storage uh, um, service uh, can be used. So what are some of the features of the file storage uh, service? Uh, the first thing is uh, the service is AD local. Uh, if you have a multi-AD region, uh, it's, it's an AD local service, supports NFS v3 uh, protocol. Uh, it supports network lock management for file locking. It has full POSIX semantics. Uh, data protection, we support snapshot capabilities and you could create up to 10,000 snapshots per file system. Uh, for security, we do support uh, security of, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, encryption for data at rest uh, for all file systems and metadata. And very soon we are also going to support uh, encryption in, in transit uh, for uh, data on, on the file systems. Uh, of course, you can access the service through the console, API, CLIs, SDKs and all that. Uh, you can create uh, 100 file systems and two mount targets per AD per account. Uh, and of course, these are soft limits. You can always uh, increase them. So uh, let's get into some of the details on, uh, on what the file storage service entails. What is a mount target? What is a file system? What is an export path, etc. So before I proceed, let me... Let me have the ability to write on the screen. So um, what is a mount target? Right now I'm showing you a region uh, which has two availability domains. Now it can be a single AD region also and all the concepts I'm going to talk about sort of remain the same. Um, so we have a region two with two ADs uh, and just for illustration purposes, I mean regions have three ADs. Uh, I'm just showing this for illustration purposes. We have a, a VCN. Uh, which you, if you recall from the VCN module, it's a regional service uh, and it's running at this particular, uh, 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 has this particular address space. Uh, I have two subnets, uh, smaller subnets within the VCN, 10.0.0 slash 24 and 10.0.1.0 slash 24 here, right? So I create this thing called a mount target, which is nothing but an NFS endpoint that lives in your subnet of choice. You can choose to have a mock target created here or in some other uh, subnet or in another uh, in an, another AD. Uh, it's specific to an AD uh, as it's shown here. And mount target has an IP address and DNS name that you can use in your mount commands. So the simple way to identify a mount target is you get this, uh, this private IP address uh, which you could use uh, for your, uh, for, with your file systems. And the way your NFS clients access the file system is, is, is going through the mount target. So you can see there are two NFS clients here uh, in two different ADs, two different subnets, 
they are accessing a file system right here uh, on this particular uh, this particular mount target a mount target requires three private ip addresses in the in the subnet uh, so it's a good practice to not use a, a subnet of slash 30 because a slash 30 subnet will have only four ip addresses so a four a three out of the four would be taken up by the mount target if you have this kind of a scenario where you have a mount target and also an nfs client an instance uh, and you have one more instance here you will run out of um, ip address spaces uh, because uh, because your subnets is is too small so don't uh, use subnets which are slash 30 or smaller and you might ask why do we require three uh, private ip addresses two of the ip addresses are used during the mount target creation and the third ip is used for high availability and we'll talk about that uh, how your tcp connections have to survive reboots uh, or if you know mount target has a failure we also this is highly available right so how do we ensure that uh, the mount target stays highly available right uh, so the third ip is used for that we'll talk about this in more detail uh, when we go into the security uh, section so uh, so it's a best practice uh, the difference between the previous slide one the uh, the, the key differences between the previous slide and, and the next slide is you can see that right here I have the mount target and one of the clients in the same subnet now there is no hard requirement uh, to which says that you cannot do that um, right right now you can see that mount target has its own subnet and this client uh, instance has its own subnet they are running in this AD1 now Placing NFS client and mount target in the same subnet can result in IP conflicts. Why? Because when you create the mount target, you are not shown which IP address is used for the mount target. Like I said, 10.0.0.6, you see this, but there are two more uh, IP addresses which get used, right? We don't know what those two are. Uh, and if you don't know those, uh, you are one of the clients could actually grab one of it, right? One of those uh, IP addresses. Now, it's not a requirement uh, but it's a good idea to place FSS mount target in its own uh, subnet uh, the, the file storage service mount target in so subnet where it can consume IPs as it needs right so create its own subnet uh, and let it run there instead of having a single subnet where you put the mount target as well as you put the, the instances but just again keep in mind there is no hard rule which says you cannot do that you absolutely can do it it's just a good best practice to separate them out so uh, so we talked about mount target and what those are it's an nfs endpoint highly available uh, where you run your file systems now what is a file system file system is the primary resource for storing files in this file storage service to access your file systems you can use an existing mount target like you see here this file system is running on this mount target which was already there or if you don't have a mount target, you will create a new mount target. We'll look into the demo and you can see how that works. Uh, as we said in the beginning, you can create up to 100 file systems per uh, mount target. Uh, it's AD specific, seems pretty reasonable. And then you can access the file system uh, through any of the instances, whether it's virtual machines, bare metal, doesn't matter. Or you can access from on-prem uh, through Fast Connect or VPN uh, uh, as well, right? So, so we looked at mount target, what mount target is. We looked at a file system, but how do you make all this real? Like how, how is a file system made available? So a file system is made available through a mount target using this concept called export path. Again, a file system is made available through a mount target through this concept called export path. Export path is the unique path specified when the file system is associated with a mount target when you when you create them uh, during the creation process so one thing to keep in mind is no two file systems associated with the same mount target can have overlapping export paths so what do i mean by that a path like slash example and a path like slash example slash path are not allowed why because this part is the same between these two between these two uh, export paths and the system gets confused uh, it doesn't realize that these are two separate file systems right 
So let's use a graphic to, to understand that it's so that's much simpler. So you create a mount target. We saw that in a couple of slides back uh, and it's nothing but a highly available uh, NFS endpoint. You get a private IP like this, right? And there are two more IP addresses which are not shown. Export path one can be something like example one path one and this can be your file system one. And export path two can be example two slash root example two slash path. And here you can have your second file system. So this is how you would create. Right now I'm showing two. You could create up to 100 file systems per mount target. Now, how do you use it? Right, export path along with the mount target IP address is used to mount the file system to an instance. All right. So what do I mean by that? You run a command like this, typical mount command, sudo mount. This is your mount target. This is your export path separated by a colon here and then this is your directory on the nfs client instance on which external file systems are mounted right so in this example here i have mounting file system one to this mount point and i'm mounting file system two to this mount point so as you create um, a mount target and a file system and the the next step you have to do is mount them to an instance running in OCI, right? So you launch an instance, uh, you uh, you know install some of the utilities, NFS utilities if they're not there, and then uh, you just mount them. The process is really straightforward. Uh, you, we just saw this mount command here. You create an instance, uh, you install some of these uh, NFS utilities, uh, you create a mount point, and, and then you, you, mount, uh, the, you, you, you mount the file system with the mount target here, the, share, the, uh, the mount export path here, to the local directory on your instance, so the mount point on your instance. And that's how simple it is uh, to use. So with that, let me jump over to the console and in and show you a quick demo uh, of how uh, FSS uh, file storage service works in action. Thank you for joining this uh, module. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this module where we 